people come from all over the world to what is famously referred to as Music City. It is by no accident that Nashville, Tennessee was deemed that nickname. So many hopefuls have arrived with hopes and dreams of becoming the next big musician. Many have succeeded in conquering that dream, and still some face the harsh reality that some dreams are too far out of reach. However, one man knew at a very young age that he was destined to be a performer. Since the age of 16, Justin Nault has been entertaining crowds from coast to coast. You may recognize him from his live performances with his cover band, The Cougar Petting Zoo. Justin's dream of becoming a music sensation is turning more and more into reality every single day. Justin wasn't the only one who was aware of his musical abilities. At the young age of eight, his father recognized the rare talent of his young son. Well, he started taking piano lessons when he was eight, and within no time at all, he could play songs like The Pink Panther and uh, The Entertainer. And every time we go to a restaurant, if there was a piano in the corner, he'd sit down and start playing. The people were amazed. So he was a ham at an early age. I knew that music was what I wanted to do probably since I was about 13, which I started playing piano when I was 8, and I wrote my first song when I was 13, and that was really like, once I wrote my own song, I was like, yeah, that's what I need to do, for sure. Maybe you were just someone too close to see, or maybe you're a million miles away. I guess I thought you'd hold your breath and wait around. When I called your name, you were nowhere to be found Oh, I got a good thing, good thing somewhere, somewhere But I closed my eyes and lost my... My biggest musical inspiration was by far Billy Joel. Um, I found my parents' greatest hits record of Billy Joel when I was about eight, and I just fell asleep to it every single night for like, probably years. <laughs> and then uh, I learned Piano Man, learned how to play Piano Man when I was like eight. I didn't realize that I ended up playing it ten times a night at a piano bar when I was older. But uh, by far, Billy Joel definitely. Now I have his song lyrics tattooed. I wait about something out there, but I waited way too long. Just hoping someday I'll tell you what I meant to say. Put you in my heart where you belong. My good thing gone. Uh, my family has been. Incredibly supportive from day one. Um, I said this on the show too, but pretty much since from the time I started talking, I was singing with my dad, we'd sing in his pickup truck, singing like Garth Brooks, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and that kind of stuff. I still, to this day, like my brother's wedding, we performed with my dad and my uncle, doing two bar harmonies to Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, my, the influence from my dad goes a lot farther than that because my dad's a business owner. So I've always like, the way I differentiate myself from most musicians is that I think of things business first, music second. I know that music is my business, but in my opinion, like I'm selling a product. And if I don't have a business mindset, that product isn't gonna get me anywhere. So I call him on a, literally on a daily basis. Any questions I have in terms of promoting, marketing, any kind of business questions, he answers them for me and helps me make educated decisions on them. Yeah, I got so much to learn I lie awake thinking about what I might have said And my lonely world keeps turning, turning uh, Some of the most noteworthy things I've done in my career um, Basically just kind of a step-by-step -step transition where I went from Rhode Island to Boston went to Berkeley College of Music, which was a big deal for me, just getting accepted and going there was awesome. Uh, moving to Nashville was a big step, and then getting the Big Bang gig was a huge step. I'm still full-time there, which is great. Um, and then I started the uh, an all-request cover band called the Cougar Pennington. And 
and that was cool because we did an every Wednesday show in Murfreesboro at this huge, huge club. And we just, there was like a whole month where we just broke attendance record every week. And the following week we would break our previous record, so we went on and on like that. That was pretty noteworthy. Um, but the most noteworthy by far would be this reality TV show on ABC that I just did called Bud United Presents The Big Time. Um, I submitted a video along with thousands of other people from all over the world, and I was chosen as top 11 of singer-songwriters, and I was flown to L.A. where I auditioned for Evan Weinstein who created The Amazing Race, and from there it was narrowed down to three singer-songwriters, which I was one of the top three as well, and got flown to Vegas and filmed a TV show. Guess I felt you'd hold your breath and wait around When I call your name, you were nowhere to be found Oh, I got a good thing somewhere When I closed my eyes and lost my way I felt something out there But I waited way too long I keep hoping someday I'll tell you what I meant to say Put you in my heart where you belong My good thing gone So my debut record is called It's Just Me, and everything just perfectly fell into place. I, I moved to Nashville, and a few months into living in Nashville, I got the job at the Big Bang Doing Piano Bar, and there was a piano player there named Danny Smith. And uh, Danny has a ton of experience with different bands, he's toured the country, he's played stadiums, he's done all sorts of stuff. Um, Danny and I clicked like instantly. He was really cool, so I ended up just going to his house and hanging out with him all the time. And uh, it was summer of 2010, and I came to him and I said, hey, I really think I want to make a record. I got some songs, and I need a producer, and I need an engineer. Do you have anybody in mind? And he just kind of started laughing because uh, one of his best friends in the whole world is a guy named Dwight Baker, who owns Matchbox Studios in Austin, Texas. And uh, Dwight has done everything. He played drums for Enrique Iglesias. He has five songs cut on Kelly Clarkson's last record, uh, My December. Um, played a huge part in engineering that album as well. So we went, just packed up, and we flew to Austin in February 2011, and we stayed there for 16 days. We did three days of rehearsing with the band, and then 11 days straight. We, some days we did 18 hours in the studio, and we just did that for 11 days straight until the record was done. And, sent it up to New York and it got mastered at Sterling Sound and came back and it was awesome. And the rest is history now. <laughs> Um, if I were to give advice to prospective musicians, uh, Belmont students, or any other students really, um, I tend to give the exact opposite advice that most people in Nashville give me, where I totally agree with the standard of it's all about the song. If you're a songwriter, your songs have to be good. But to just say that your music being good is going to make it happen for you is kind of a rainbows and unicorns mentality. Like, really, really get the business end of what you do down. If there's music business classes at Belmont, take them. Take every single one you can. Use all of your electives towards music business, because if you don't figure out the music end of it, the business end of it, it doesn't matter how good your music is. It's not, you get chewed up if you don't know the business end of it. So. You can look me up on Twitter, at Justin Null, J-U-S-T-I-N-N-A-U-L-T. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash Justin Null Music, or just go to www.justinnull.com.
Thank you all for joining today and watching What's Going Down in Bruin Town's first official show. I hope you enjoyed listening to Justin Nault tell a story and give us a little insight on what it takes to be a musician. I hope you all were inspired because I know that I definitely was. Please follow him on Twitter and check out his website and find where he is playing. And please go check him out. You will not be disappointed. Please join us again next Monday as we have a new guest. Um, many of you have probably heard or seen him on YouTube, but I will not disclose who it is right yet. You will have to like our Facebook page, What's Going Down in Bruintown, and you'll have to follow us on Twitter at Bruintown. Maybe then I will tell you who it is, but if not, that will just add to the suspense and the excitement and give you a reason to come back and watch us again next week. But until then, I'm your host, Kayla Becker, and thank you again for watching, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye.